In today's video we will be launching new cows to the space station because the old cows, well, they didn't have a docking port. They didn't want anybody docking to them, so we have to launch a new. And regarding the old cows, well, we're gonna deorbit them and uh, orbital re-entry heating will turn them into burgers. Well fried, so to say. Alright, so let's get into the today's episode. So once we're here, let's first go into our zoology bay deployer, which we have used previously to launch things, and we're going to deploy a new experiment. Last time we were doing plant uh, experiments, and this time we will be doing creature comforts, because we are launching creatures, or cows, or call them whatever you want. We have put an additional life support capsule, and here, this was the source of my error previous time. I didn't have a docking port here, so once the pod decoupled with all the experiments and landed back, there was no senior docking port to connect anything to. So this time I have decided I'm gonna do the following. I have put another senior docking port first, and then I will be placing this additional tank which will contain some additional uh, docking ports. So here, senior docking port, and here we're gonna be placing two more regular docking ports so that the future capsules can actually dock here, perform the science and all that jazz. All right, so on this side, I also want to make sure that I have uh, balanced this out so they can dock well using the RCS build aid, checking everything, checking, make sure that the staging is correct. And that would basically secure us that we can go pretty safely all the way to the Kerbal Space Station. Good. All right, so making sure that the staging is correct, I just wanted to be really sure that I haven't messed something up. All right. Looks good. Expansion, everything, making sure that everything is correct. And here now, instead of the docking port, because, well, the we don't have the docking port on the cows module, we need something else. We need the claw. We're gonna use the claw to connect and dock to the cows in space and push them out of the orbit, as you saw in the previous, or in the preview. So, Zoology Bait Deployer, we're rolling it out to the launch pad. There we go, beautiful. Making sure that those are well aligned and then we will be securing the launch. By the way, guys, by this time when you're watching this, I'm pretty sure that the Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access has become available. This series will continue, although it won't be daily, it will be more like once or twice per week, just to be sure. And we're going to use our, of course, patrons and channel members to be launching and doing the science. So I have Stian, who is uh, my uh, YouTube member, and he will be piloting, and I'm thinking... Uh, we have the uh, Smoke and Kerman who will be the scientists. Okay, retracting the crew capsule, or sorry, the crew tunnel. And here we go, launch once again. You've seen this me doing before, so this launch is nothing new to you guys. But uh, this time, hopefully we will be correcting the error that we did last time. So I'm actually pretty positive and hopeful that everything will be going smooth this time. So we have Stian Kerman as a pilot. Timo, for whichever reason, I don't know, have, doesn't have a picture, I'll try to correct this, sorry Timo. And Dan Kerman, who is our, I think it's his, his engineer du jour, yeah. All right, our trusty Falcon Heavy or, you know, Tundra Heavy rocket is going upwards. I'm hoping that uh, everything will go rather smooth this time. And we're gonna do the encounter, we're gonna dock to the space station, we're gonna conduct some experiments, and once we are done, look at the cloud layer. I really enjoy this. I mean, Blackrack, you are genius. This volumetric clouds has completely changed the look of the KSP-1 for me. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, it makes it almost good as, um, I mean, the KSP-2, I... Uh, I believe does look equally, I mean, nice, although these volumetric clouds, I must say, I, I, I actually like them more, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. However, you have to remember one thing when comparing KSP-1, heavily modded, to the KSP-2, KSP-2 is stock. So imagine how beautiful the KSP-2 will look once it's modded and the modders have given their support and everything. 
but it's really impressive that the KSP2 devs are trying to get everything from the get-go. So really, really, really happy and excited to actually get a chance to play more KSP2. Right, so there we go. Our apoapsis, we're gonna add the maneuver. All right, beautiful. Making sure that everything is well aligned. Perfect. Now, okay. Fiddling with the maneuver until we get ourselves an encounter and uh, making sure that we're gonna be burning and circularizing first. And I have deliberately selected lower orbit because I want to catch up to the station. Or actually, yeah. So this is the thing. When you're doing a rendezvous with the station, if the capsule needs to catch up to the station, you will select lower orbit because they are faster. So going and looping through a couple of laps around the curb, you will be catching up to it. However, if the station is behind you, then you want to have go to a higher orbit and let the station catch up to you. So that's actually a simple but effective trick on how to ensure that you have a good orbital rendezvous and everything is dandy. Right, okay, disconnected and there we go. So now we're gonna do a bunch of fiddling and fiddling maneuvers until we can secure ourselves an encounter. So I'm actually gonna place this in the ascending node because uh, we need to reduce the ascending node to 0.0. .0 so I'm gonna be making sure that the ascending point I ascending node is 0.0. .0. And then we're gonna do a short burn just to align those two together. There we go, accelerating, pointing maneuver prograde. And Stian, you will be engaging the thrusters for 17.4 meters per second. Let's deploy the solar panels. All right, there we go, beautiful. And I'm thinking guys, after these experiments are done, the next episode will probably be going to Duna and stuff. I've been putting it off for way too long and I cannot wait to actually go and start going to Duna. So yeah, I think it will be happening in the next one. So just make sure that you, you know, if you like this video and you're enjoying it, do fling a like at it and uh, do press subscribe if you want to be notified when next time that the episode goes live. So, yeah, okay. Here we have our maneuver node. And after some fiddling, I made sure that I tweaked the parameters and I've skipped it because it took me like 20 minutes of fiddling to get the good encounter. Uh, and also for some reason my modded install doesn't show me where my target is. As you can see, we are aligned and the, the target is in the dark. I don't know why, honestly. If anybody of you knows, why this is not shown, do let me know. See, there's the there's the station and we're coming to it. So I'm using the docking port alignment indicator mod to actually help me judge on how far I am. But at this point, there are no ports uh, that are available. So I'll have to do everything blind, so to say, which is actually not easy. But I mean, I've played this game quite enough. I think at this point I'm over, let's say, six or seven thousand hours roughly steam doesn't do it justice because i run it through the executable but yeah it, it is what it is okay let's dump this and now we have small orbital thrusters which we can use to maneuver and get ourselves prograde i think i'll need to ditch these because before i actually um before i dock I just want to make sure that I'm very close to the station be before i dump this small orbital maneuver and thrusters this time I had I was fortunate to get good encounter. Otherwise, if I didn't, then it would have been tricky and I would have needed this extra delta V. So yeah, I'm making sure that I'm coming in towards the station at four meters relative velocity. And I'm looking eyeballing everything through the nav ball. Yeah. Just making sure that the yellow and the pink markers align, which means that we eventually and the station will be ending up in the same place. And that's really, really important. You must not forget that. That's kind of the whole idea of the thing, so to say. Right, so making sure that this is pushed correctly. All right. Here we go. Okay, relative target zero. So I think I'm gonna now point, let's say this way and just ditching this. And this gave us a little bit of boost, but now we're going to decouple cows. Cows, undock. Bye-bye. Now, 
The cows have their own thrusters. The problem with the cows is they don't have any RCS on board. So I actually cannot control them. But now I have a docking port that's available. So I have to control from here and then I have to go and fix those. So, okay, getting us aligned with the docking port. Uh, we should be flipping the rocket and actually burning a little bit more pro grade towards the target. Now we no longer have the rocket motors at the back, but uh, we have still our reaction thrusters and we have enough uh, reaction uh, uh, propellant, monoprop, yes. All right, so right now at this point, I'm actually not looking at my docking port, uh, docking port adapter. I'm actually looking at my nav ball. And the target of my nav ball is to get the pink and the yellow markers to align. And I'm gonna do so by going a little bit upwards and then dragging, by burning prograde, the yellow marker onto the pink markers until they are aligned, like this. That will result in the target velocity of 2.8 meters per second going towards the target. And right now there is a simple way how we can actually do that. I could either flip the rocket and burn retrograde or I can just burn re in reverse. So yeah, the reaction thrusters are good because then you can actually steer using them. So instead of pressing H to go prograde, I'm gonna be pressing N to go retrograde. Let's open this. We're gonna arm the, the arm, but I'm not gonna use it just yet. So actually, here we are. And then I'm gonna just gently nudge this one out of the park. So those cows are about to become orbital bacon burgers. Yeah, all right, so hold on. There we go, easy does it. I mean, it's very nice procedure to use one module to bump the other out of existence. It's, um, it's the stuff that I use, yes. All right, so as you can see, there is a tiny gap between the lab and the zoology bay. So we're just now making sure that we are aligned correctly. All right, and now I'm starting to look at my prograde marker and retrograde. So I'm actually gonna do use my uh, docking alignment port indicator. Our distance is 11 meters. We are burning towards it, burning a little bit downwards. I just want to nudge the zoology bay out of um, out of the alignment, not the, there we go. Off, off, off you go, shoo, shoo. Yeah, right, okay, that's fixed. Those cows are out of the way. Now let's connect the new cows, right? So, docking port alignment indicator, we are more or less aligned as indicated by the orange pip in the marker. So, we're gonna align, make sure that it's in smack center. It's not helping me that this, uh, that the station is not oriented orbit normal because it's just tilted due to the orbital maneuver shenanigans that we were pulling off. It would help it if, if it was, you know, exact normal, but uh, it is what it is. Okay. So let's actually pull it to normal. So yeah, there we go, orbit normal, thank you. So now let's switch back, no, not to the deorbited cows that are gonna become the bacon burgers, but this one, yeah, all right. So we're gonna align this, um, we're gonna align the craft with this, and I'm using my reaction wheels not to burn because that would basically throw us out of alignment, hopefully. I mean, we're not technically fully aligned, but we're, we're getting there. So now a little bit more transversal movement, which is basically to align the two docking ports and then we will be burning prograde or actually towards the docking port connect, resulting in a soft dock, hopefully. And there we go, connection, beautiful. All right, so now the time has come that we start conducting the creature comforts experiments. As you can see, our cows are very comfortable and they're enjoying themselves very much. So I'm hoping that the creature comforts will say, yes, the cows can, you know, sit and watch TV in the orbit of Kerbin. Yeah, all right. So uh, what I wanna do, I want to move Timo, which is only a Kerbal that I have that is the scientist and he will be solely responsible for their cows uh, well safety and also security and they will be doing uh, eurekas and bio products i wonder what bio products they will be making hmm consume food and 
produce the output bioproducts yeah a good way of calling poop yeah what can you tell so after a many orbital things you know orbital shenanigans i figured i might as well turn on the lights and now we need to be producing bioproducts so first timo was doing research to produce eurekas and after eurekas were done he was he moved over to zoology bay talking stories to the cows having nice you know comfy time you know having a coffee with them etc until they produce their bioproducts yeah all right so that thing being said uh let's just do everything here and making sure that we close and after that we will be deorbiting this stage uh yes undock good and now what i want to be fine i don't want to litter so i don't want to be littering uh, the orbit so we're gonna do we're gonna actually dock with the cows that we have uh, decoupled from here and we're gonna essentially deorbit them all right fair enough so that being said let us arm this and let us plan for the rendezvous with the cows that we're supposed to be turning into orbital burgers all right and after some fiddling we're going to be enabling the arm and then we have to make sure that we have a okay we have a, basically a rendezvous with the previous zoology bay that we will be doing the, or the orbit for right okay we are actually quite close to it so all we want to do is we want to make sure that we target we find where it is and that's the hard part because i don't see these bloody markers i wish i did and then it dawned on me maybe i should use just the docking port or something i don't know let's go target progress i have to figure out where it is so with this craft it's much easier to maneuver and there we go aha so if i use the menu um, the docking port alignment indicator then i know where they are so i will be able to connect and dock with the cows yeah okay dock with the cows that sounds just weird when i say it out loud i'm, I'm probably gonna get some comments like ground force do you actually hear yourself yeah now i do sorry all right so that being said let us go and uh, burn prograde towards it so yeah beautiful we are slowly but surely come closing in the distance is two kilometers or 1.6 kilometers timo once again being hidden by a big panel of course sorry timo I think it's something tied to your suit or something. I'm probably just going to change your suit and then it's going to be fine. All right. So, let's see. 1100 meters. Making sure that we are keeping on target because we want to be ending in the same, same place. And just a reminder. Well, this, uh, this craft doesn't actually have a docking port or actually it has. But what would be the fun in that? I mean, we have already grabbed the claw, so we might as well use the claw, right? All right, 800 meters. I might actually just skip until the time we actually get connected, so or get close to it, so that we can dock. So after what what it seemed like an eternity, we are finally within the final hundred meters away from the zoology bay. So I've actually cut that part for your convenience and. Uh, <laughs> You don't need to lose uh, the sanity as I do during during these maneuvers. So, uh, right, we're coming in close. So now we should do the flippity flip. And, and technically, I could actually connect with the senior docking port, as I said. But what would be the fun in that? We have the claw, might as well use it. All right, so let's do this alignment. And then we just sh should actually smack into the target and everything should be hunky-dory. So I'm just trying to find, to find a good alignment and then let's go for the target. 
I'm keeping my, my target markers aligned and we have a capture. And of course, I could have done this better and having it more, you know, how to say, elegant. But what would be the fun in that? So, <laughs> the whole point is now that we rotate this advanced grabbing unit and try and find a good alignment so that we can actually burn. I honestly, caveat, I didn't find it. So, what I actually decided to do is I decided to use all of my monoprop just to basically deorbit the damn thing. So, all right, let's do this. Periapsis is at 89, so it's gonna take a little bit while, and I'm, as you can see, I'm burning retrograde using RCS thrusters to reduce the periapsis. I don't know if I will have enough propellant. That's actually <laughs> something to consider. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can raise the peri or lower the periapsis below the 75, so it will eventually, those cows will be perfectly grilled to perfection courtesy of the orbital re-entry heating produced by Kerbin's plasma. Right. All right. So yeah, periapsis is in. So eventually they will land out and burn. Okay. Monoprop. I'm actually on the reserves. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I left only a teeny weeny part of the monoprop just to be able to safely enter. And now I'm actually going to use the only engine that I have. The Super Draco thrusters. Okay, let's see how they were all burn. From what I saw, Super Dracos are amazing. So make sure that we are aligned and then let's do a little bit of burn. I'm actually trying to get as close as I can to periapsis. Oh no, actually they burned. Oh god, that well that looks just that was underwhelming. I was waiting for a big burn and more it seemed like a small fart. Okay, yeah. Right. Close this, decouple and let's hope that with our periapsis being 59 we will be able to deorbit. Cows. Well, good luck. Grilled to perfection we said, right? Yeah, well, you can get them all. But the thing is, we need to get these creature comforts experiments. We need to get the cow poo safely back to the back to the KSC. So, yeah, there's that. All right, Stian, Dan, and Timo, let's hope that you get a nice, soft, safe splashdown. Getting down and making sure that we can. It's gonna be a little bit longer descent because I don't have any propellant, so I'm at the mercy of the Kerbin's gravity, which will slowly but surely pull us all the way in. We land when we land, so yeah. All right, accelerating this footage a little bit just to make sure that, well, it's not too much. And look at this. We are coasting and we are getting to the sunrise. So I decided to slowly decelerate and make sure that you guys get a chance to enjoy this re-entry. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. And our drogue chute deploying, followed by our regular main chutes, and then we will be performing a soft touchdown at the slowly and calmly at 18 meters per second. Oopsie. Ouch. Well, good thing I have a heat shield. And that was 150 science earned. Thank you very much, guys. And we got some ribbons. Then got some ribbons. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.